Okay, next point. Um, leveraging the joints and constraints. I uh, see I'm going a little too fast for the computer. All right, so pretty much in all most CAD systems, we do have a way of making joints or making constraints. Uh, they might be called something else in NX. Um, but in CATIA, we have the same capability uh, as we do have uh, in GDMT. So we have our constraints here. We also have already created a bunch of uh, joints or a mechanism in CATIA from the kinematic, DMU kinematic workbench. And it's important to note here that because we are working now in kinematics, you do need to have the mechanical modeler add-on module for 3DCS in order to import these joints and constraints. And the mechanical modeler is a, a really inexpensive add-on that gives you access to all these joints and constraints and the automatic extraction of them, as Jason's about to show, which will allow you to apply those as moves onto your model. So with the with the CATIA STNA, the, the embedded GDNT and CAD, and with joints and constraints, you can have your moves and your tolerances drawn straight from your CAD system and automatically applied onto your model. Okay, and just to show this really quick, I'm going to go switch over to my kinematics um, workbench here. I'm going to update my uh, joints, and this works. This process I'm going to show is only going to work if the model is actually built in CATIA, not through DCS. So I'm going to update. It's going to build my parts based on the constraint. Um, and then I'm going to push this automatic update for using constraints. And what this is going to do is I'm going to use the constraints I already have, and it's going to create all the joints. So I can show you more what's going to, you know, it's going to, it can, I can either auto-create everything, which means you'll also have to kind of investigate to make sure everything is right. It might just go ahead and start creating constraints, but it might not give you the right results that you're looking for. The reason for that is because it doesn't necessarily put them in the correct order. Correct. And with mechanical movement, and kinematic moves, because each move is tied to the previous one, the order is very important. You have to make sure that everything is assembled in the correct order step process. So you can definitely step through this process yourself. Um, this uh, right-hand arrow will uh, go through each constraint or pair of constraints and add them into there as joints. So we already have these constraints made. I can go into my scenes to separate. Apply the entire scene. So if we have our constraints made or our joints made, we can bring them in through 3DCS into DCS. Let me switch back over. And just to show, we do have a, a bunch of moves already created, but um, there is no, right now, there's only that one. So I'm going to turn that off. Uh, search constraints. And then we can specify we want joints and or constraints. And it's going to go through nine moves created from eight joints. And what that means, too, is that there is um, a command or a motion move within these joints. So my first one has got an angle-driven constraint. It's at negative 85 to 90, but I'm going to change that because it's going to really throw the part around. So negative 20, zero. All right, now I'm going to now build and then deviate. And we're going to see that the, the motion move is going to take that tire up and down based on a spring, uh, based on the motion or the joints that we applied, plus whole pin, whole pin floats and tolerance deviation. What's nice about the joints and constraints and using the kinematic moves is, as you can see, it allows us to simulate in multiple positions. So rather than just in a single assembly position, um, then having to change the model itself in order to be in a different position, we can move it through a full range of motion 
And once you're doing your analysis at the end, you can actually analyze it at every position 